Okay, guys, in the shop right here at Wheel Street Time, and we have the project of all projects. Chris's 1942 Harley Davidson UL. So, been a labor of love so far. Chris and I have hundreds of hours into the restoration of this motorcycle. We're getting real close. We're hoping today's gonna be the day that we fire this motorcycle up for the first time. Chris has been riding his 1950 Harley 45 for years. Yeah and he's been at the back of the pack. <laughs> so we decided, Chris, we can't take it anymore. We need you up front. We got a short checklist of stuff. Really excited to get this thing finished up just in time for Daytona Bike Week. So when we started thinking about, you know, what to build me to step up a little bit as far as bike goes, I love the flatheads. So a big twin flathead just made perfect sense for me. Went with black because what other color do you want on a motorcycle besides black? Up top, Flanders bars and risers. Underneath that, a set of original gas tanks and emblems. Then to cap it all off, I have a set of original guide spotlights that I think are really gonna change the look of the bike. And then we've got the whole drive line installed and hooked up. Engine freshly rebuilt, lower end balanced and trued by our guy Ken. Top end came together really, really well. Cool to see the port job. It's gonna run a lot better than Steve's bike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> In a day or less, we should be riding this motorcycle. Yeah, awesome. Man. Let's do it. Yeah. So first things first, let's go ahead and uh, let's just run down the line. Rear stand clip. We've got this. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and bring this down. This is always the fun part where we're rocking back and forth. You're gonna be in a whole new world, Chris. I know. It's gonna feel weird to not say bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bring this rear end up and it'll allow us to set the location and just or verify the location of the rear stand. No and we're gonna set this rear stand catch where we feel like it goes. And then, Chris, you go ahead and bring the rear stand up and yeah i like that now let me grab a, let me grab a pick and i can scribe that so this this bike had many iterations in my mind after steve built his bobber for a while i thought you know would do a bobber like his but uh, the more i looked at it and the more we started working i just really like the full fender look you know just that classic style from this era of time and and my goal is, you know, to continue adding little bits of uh, aftermarket flair. Flare, flare, there we go, that uh, guys would have done back in the day. There's a 48-pan uh, head in there. It's called the Hot Rod Bike. It's got all the kind of stuff that guys would have adding in those days. It's got a hood ornament looking thing on the front of it. It's got some graphics on the front fender and cheese grater style bumper guard and those types of things. So. 13 pieces of flare. 13 pieces of flare. Mm -hmm. Masking tape so we don't chip the paint. Look straight. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Let's do it again. That'll work. I'm gonna have to take that light off to get that one. At least loosen it to get it in there. There's my sunglasses. I've been looking for these. Oh, I see. Yeah. Bye, God. That ought to get you. Yep. Sweet. Check it off, rear stand mounting clip. I love it. Then you're gonna be able to mount the tail light even better. Woo-wee. Man, it's nice to finish up whole sections of the bike, you know. A little bit closer to running. A little closer to running. What's the first big twin flathead you rode, Chris? The first big twin one? Yeah. Not big twin flat, but the first big twin I rode was your knucklehead when we were at Daytona yeah. a couple years back, you know. That was the first time you rode one, period? As far as one, yeah. Wait, was that the time that your 45 crapped out? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. I remember the first big twin flathead I ever rode was yeah. in Death Valley. Yeah. I took my 45 out there, and out there it's just expanse, you know? Everybody's everybody's just leaving me, and I'm out there cruising 55, everybody else is running 75, and my dad the second day put me on his, his big flatty, man. It was a revelation, it was like, these bikes are insane. This is a ton of power for what it is. You know, you get out, you can bike like that, you get out and run with new bikes quite easily, so. <laughs> Life changer yeah. for me, that one was. The 80, 80 flatheads, they're just 
so much fun, so much to work. So Matt mentioned this project a couple of videos back, and so a lot of you guys have been asking to see more of it, and so that's why we're here. We're gonna finish this thing up. We're close to getting it running, and so we wanted to bring you along to, to see the finishing process of what it looks like when you get to the end of a project. First fire, and then first ride when we take it out for the first time. So what Chris really means is he is tired of waiting. <laughs> <laughs> So last video, I mentioned a special 45 project, asked you guys to comment whether you thought we should pursue that as one of our next videos. Overwhelmingly, a ton of response. You guys wanna see the 45 project. Now, I can't tell you exactly what it is yet, but it is a project of epic proportions. What's the project name? <laughs> I don't know, that's what we gotta figure out. We've codenamed it Project Dancing Bear. We've codenamed it <laughs> Blazer, Laser, <laughs> Eeyore, Yogi Bear, McGilla Gorilla. Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy. All right, we, what we've got, we've already timed the engine. And now that I'm changing the points gap here, we'll probably have to retime it. They got a big old huge gap. Okay, so we've got now, for star hub screws, Chris, uh -huh. what we may try and do, we can get these star hub screws and I've got the condenser I'm doing now. Then we're on to lower carb support. We're getting actually really close. Go ahead and put these in for now, and sure. then we'll do the yeah, parkerized you know, one later. Yeah, if you want to take the wheel out, we might be able to diagnose that little bit of drag okay. in there that we're feeling. Yeah. Yeah, these points were, you know, nowadays, finding a good set of new old stock Harley points is nearly impossible. Uh, you don't see them often. But the old Dixie Distributing Company actually made a pretty decent pair. Um, at least that's where I have to assume these were from in the package that they were in. And this is actually a replica of the early style points a hundred different ways to take a modern set of points that you buy at the hardware store and set it up in a Harley Davidson circuit breaker timer assembly. Not a difficult thing to do. We love using original components here if we can, but you know, we burn up a set of points out on the road, Chris, or something like that, and yep. we can't find an original set. Well, we go to Napa, buy some Chevy points. So let, hopefully we'll let us use their drill and can set this all up pretty easy. So 22 thousandths of an inch is what we're looking for. I'm gonna pull out the old icrometer again and set it. Then I'm gonna come back and check it. I'm guessing 20. Sometimes you nail it, 22 thousandths. Let's see if 25 won't go in, that's for sure. Oh no. That's 22 thousandths. 22 thousandths of an inch. Okay. Now we're gonna have to retime it. Retime. Free up the rear wheel. That's what we're going for now, Chris. Yep. Oh, wait, shit. Yeah. Okay. When we spin the wheel over, we're just getting this little bit of drag, you know, and I don't know what it is. This, the brake is tight, like, but it's not what's slowing everything up, I don't believe. It's tight and there's not, the pads are right there, which is great, yeah, that's, yeah. that's brake life. Um, I don't know if there's one too many shims in the bearing, you can set that back up, mm -hmm. or it doesn't feel like there's too many shims in there, but. Oh no, it actually needs shimmed. So goal here is to replace that outer dust cover. You guys can see it's got all that nasty black paint. When we lace up a wheel and even before that, when we paint a hub, each of these components has their own specific finish. These are supposed to be parkerized rather than use a parkerized one while we're painting and have to replate it every time. We just got a dozen of these black ones and we'll replace with one of these parkerized ones. That'll work. Sweet. Okay. Seals on there, nice. But what we're looking for is that. Yeah, that movement in there. Okay. That is what was tight in the first place. So let's pull those out and I got 
inner shims and we can also take some out. So that's good. That's really what we wanted to see. That's one of those things you get together and apart, together and apart, together and apart. Yeah, look at all these. She's a little bunch in there. So how tight was it is the question because those are like three to five thousandths. Um, they make some thicker ones, but those don't feel like the thick ones. Let's try it again without those two. That's only two and a half thousandths, three thousandths. So we just took five and a half thousandths out. Yeah, it's still not. It's still not moving? Oh, no, a little, little bit. bit. See, and you're fighting the seal too. Yeah. yeah, so what we're doing is we're checking that up and down, and it may be not as crucial as we're making it out to be because the difference between three and seven thousandths doesn't make any difference, really. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this part's misleading and it'll, you know, you'll think, you'll think you're feeling five and you're feeling 15 or 12. Yeah, see, there's 20 thousandths. I would never have thought it was that much. As long as you have a little bit of room and everything's properly greased, you're not gonna seize anything up. We wanna add, uh, I'm gonna add 20 and see if we've got a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're within spec. Spec is like not super tight, but By spec we tight. mean speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's pulling out the manual. Moving insulation, truing wheel. Care of wheels and tires, servicing wheel hub. Each shim is 2,000s thick, use as many as necessary, so to adjust that the sleeve has three to five thousandths. So, now, yeah, yep, I'll take it. Looks like three to me, and we can spin it. Mm -hmm. But, to me, it seems like there was sufficient end play in there, so that may not have been the cause of our, our Here, wheel issues. Okay, so we're tight. Watch out there, okay. now let's, uh, so that's happy. We know that. Yep. Now let's go for that backing plate and see if we can figure that out. Yeah. It ought to be a really good break. Brand new shoes. Nice, that's a good fit. Um, I see a motorcycle that's gonna be running in just a short amount of time. How good it runs. <laughs> We're just gonna see how the engine builder did. Heard that guy is into taking shortcuts. <laughs> 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 yeah, you see it's tight, tightens it all up. It's the brake, I'm certain it is, but it's like, is it on the backing plate where we just got the slightest amount of metal to metal or paint to paint, yeah. or is it the brake pad mm -hmm. on the drum? Because if yeah. it's on the drum, as well as it spins, I mean, it will, it'll, it'll wear in in a quarter mile. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. So we're gonna see some sort of witness mark when we take this apart. Here we go. That's from one rivet, and yeah. that's where it's rubbed the paint off, and that's about how much it takes. Part of me just wants to take a carbide burr and just knock that space down a little bit, or a little sanding wheel, so I think that's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> we call them goggles. <laughs> Nice, Chris. Yes. We are almost there. Nice. Good, Except good, that good. We aren't. Right. All right. <laughs> mm, weld exhaust, yep. Lower carb support, air cleaner, floorboard mats, finish caps, petcock, mirror, spotlights. Retime it. We'll retime last. We'll do spotlights, caps. Don't need an air cleaner at the moment. Lower carb support. Games you play. Yeah, 
just like so. Boom. Can you push that through from mm -hmm. the other side? Thanks. Yep. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes. All right, 9 16 See, we are in. This is fully rebuilt carb. And 51 out of the pile here. We got some shift linkage. We got a fuel line, gas caps, and little stuff. But this like is inch and closer. Okay, carb support. Ah, yes, number one, gone. Mirror. There's a little shorty. Little guy, he's just a little guy. What's a key quality that you want to find in a mirror? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh, the under. Yeah. The under the arm mirror. Now you got to pick what side it's on. Let's not mount that until you're up on it. Yeah. Okay, floorboard mats, exhaust, retime, spotlights, caps. Let's pull your spotlights on. Why not? Okay. And then, I like it. Like for the big boys, live to ride, ride to live. All right, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so there's that. That's all hooked up. I hope your spotlights work. Okay. Dang, Chris, it's getting there, man. Dang, We're almost Chris. There. Nice. I just feel bad for you guys because my bike looks so good. <laughs> that, you know. No, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> I mean, Matt's got some really cool bikes. Steve, you know. <laughs> it's not about how big it is. <laughs> There's a battery. Yep. Fill, we fill that sucker up. Harley H2 style battery comes empty. So you have to fill it up with battery acid. You're just gonna fill up each compartment there. Between the two levels. Boom! Battery's ready. I'm trying to visualize how we want to do this. So what we've got here is just not a great fit. Aftermarket pipes, not just best available, but only available aftermarket pipes. And every time they do fit a little bit different. You know, you look at all the bends and tweaks in a pipe like this, which is pretty much a replica of a standard UL pipe. You've got this bend here, which is not just a curve, it's kind of offset a little bit too. So what we've got is we've got another inch to make up, inch and a half. So we'll start out with an inch and a half. And what we'll do is we'll clamp this real nice, weld it, we'll clean it up so you don't really see the welds. I got a piece of pipe right here, which is the same pipe. Depending on what side we're looking for, I would almost use this side, Chris, yeah. because it continues the that curve. The curve yeah. yeah, it continues the curve. We're gonna go lop a bunch of this off and, and start from there. While Matt's finishing up on the exhaust pipe, we're gonna get these rivets put in on the floorboard here. Harley floorboards, you know, you got the bottom part, which is obviously uh, metal, but you have a rubber pad that goes on top. You could just glue this down and it'll probably work for a little bit of a time, but then eventually it's gonna start peeling off. So the way Harley did it, they've got holes on the bottom. You put these rivets in and these rivets bend over on the bottom side to hold this mat down. You get years and years of riding out of it without having any issue. Now, you're gonna turn the floorboard over gonna take a drill. You're actually gonna drill, those holes are already pre-cut in the floorboard. So you're gonna take the drill bit, same size diameter as that hole, and just basically all you're doing is pre-making a hole in the rubber surface on the other side to make it easier to push these rivets through uh, on the back side. Now, once you get that through, what you're gonna do, and you can already see I've got this one pretty much all the way done. And these are after they've already been over. But once it comes through, it's gonna kinda of look like that. And you're gonna take your flathead screwdriver, and you want to push down because there's, it, it, naturally because this is rubber, there's a little bit of play right there. So you kind of want to use this, and this is just the best way we found to do it. You push down a little bit, take your screwdriver, you bend it back and forth just to start a little bit of a bend there on those tabs on the backside of that floorboard. 
and take your screwdriver and you're gonna put that on top of the bin there. Just tap it once and go to the other side, tap it again. So you can see all the way around this floorboard now, you have all these rivets. They're gonna keep that piece of rubber from ever coming off of that floorboard. All right, now we got two pieces. And we'll see. People ask why I wear my sunglasses. Okay. See, it's almost like this is just on in the wrong place, the orientation of the clamp. So what we need is we need a piece that thick. We need to go that way with it, weld it, get in there with a die grinder, move it that way, and then re-weld that hole on this side. Mm -hmm. So what's that quarter inch? Quarter inch anyway. Ooh. All right, we just got a little bit of, this'll be easy. All right, so our goal is to keep this as factory looking as possible. Uh, we've got about a quarter inch to make up on this little clamp here, uh, or this little bracket where it uh, bolts to the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the weld and re-weld it. So, Option two, which should have been option one. We're just gonna move the oh, whole move clamp. The bracket. Yeah, move the whole bracket. Cause yep. I feel like it could have used a little twist. Who knows how to weld? <laughs> yeah. See, so yeah, I'm gonna put the uh, air cleaner back and plate on, floorboard back on, fuel line. The last time we were in Daytona, I had my 45. Rode for most of the time till it crapped out on me. Caught on fire, um, remember that? <laughs> it did. <laughs> As I'm putting this air cleaner back and cover on, it's like, oh, I remember this part, right? <laughs> After the uh, Sons of Speed race on Saturday, rode Matt's knucklehead back and riding through New Smyrna on the knucklehead compared to the 45 was a night and day difference. So I'm looking forward to having something that keeps up with traffic, especially in an area like that where people are. Uh, in a hurry. He kept trying to trade me bikes. You were almost there. Like, no, <laughs> man, I'm gonna. <laughs> now we're at that point where tighten a few nuts and bolts, wrap this exhaust system up. Man, that is a good fit. Nothing's changed. We're set up front. We got one clamp. Stuff like this gives you more of an appreciation of what guys were doing 80 years ago, man. Because oh, yeah. as nice as all of these parts are, everything needs to be hand fit every yeah. time. It doesn't matter if you're taking apart a, you know, even motorcycles that you take apart and restore, how often are we yeah, I think having the, to refit each one yeah, of those pieces? I think the only exception to that was the, the rusty knucklehead, I mean, that bike. Just Everything went together. And it's just on because that. it was one all complete unit. Amazing. Ooh, looks good with some floorboard mats, don't it? Yes. Okay. I like uh, I like where we're sitting. One of the things that we don't have, I was looking, Chris, I I don't have a fuel line. So when we get down to the swap, um I'll just pick up one down we'll there. We'll have to get one down at the, the yeah. antique bike meet because uh, <laughs> this one might work. Dang, dude, we got Daytona beat. It's pronounced Daytona Beach. <laughs> <laughs> God, man, it fits so good. <laughs> We need oil, but first, let's check your electrical system. Okay. You want to do key? 
Ooh. Ooh, nice loud horn. Yeah. One more? Yeah. Oh, I got a headlight. Yeah, you had one. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can cut those. This guy here, we had together. Well, it may be ground. If we uh, touch this to the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you got a jump wire. Now let's get the screwdriver. Yeah, there you go. Wiggle, oh yeah, let go. Yeah, yeah, so we don't have a ground. Yeah. Um, okay, tail light? Dim as I'll get out, but it's there, 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 there is a change. I wonder if that's a 12 oh. volt bulb in there. I don't think we changed it. Yeah. So we will want to fix that with yeah. a six volt two filament. I think it's an 1154 bulb. I'm glad you fixed it. Yeah. 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 That's nice. Yep. Okay. So we have a ground on the headlight. Let's just do it now yep. so we don't have to take it back apart. Yep. Oh, now look. <laughs> How on earth? What? Well, now I'm wondering if tightening it a little more will give it that ground. Go for it now. Yes! Headlight! All right, put some oil in this piece. You know what? I'm excited to hear it go. It's been a long time since we did any port work on a, yeah. a UL, so you can usually feel the difference straight away, but I think it's gonna run great. Going to just fire it up and then adjust the timing accordingly. Okay. No, no point in static timing it. We'll time it by ear. Um, what are we thinking? Anything else? Our, our checklist of stuff, we got... That should be it. We got power to everything. Yeah. I think it's ready to run. Yes. Let's I do think it. it's ready to run. We got, dang, we even checked off all of the, we maybe could do this. Yeah, things. I got it all. All right. Right, right here. Oh, <laughs> I like it. God, it looks good. Oh, it's good. I love it, man. It is. Yeah, it's got just, the look. Just what I pictured. Just what you pictured? Yeah. Excellent. See yeah. how it feels when you kick it right now. I'm trying to remember the gearing that we went with. That's good. So what do we do, put gas in it? Yeah, let's do it. So, we got any guesses on how many kicks? I'm gonna say first kick. Yes, that's my guy. All right, you're kicking though. Yeah, yeah. It's your bike. All right, I think we're good there. Okay. You get that new gasket on that thing? Yep. Nice, all right. So, open it up, see if we... A little bit of fuel, let's dink on this float bowl. No leaks yet, eh? Cool. Jump on that sucker, choke it three times. Come on. Oh yeah, you got a little gas, one more kick. Choke off one to go. Come on, little retard. Yep. Yes! Oh, come on! Almost. No, that started. That <laughs> yep. counts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Three kicks. Leave it on one. One choke. Uh, kick. One choke kick. Yeah. You're golden. Just retard a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I can't believe the 
title set perfect. Yeah. We didn't even mess with it. Yeah. Literally the first start. Alright. Where's the go That's what he's looking for. Oh, he starts 188. Now one. What do you think? Ready for Daytona? You're set, man. It's, yeah. it's It starts easy. It runs good. Circulates yeah. oil real well. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting down there on the road and being able to have miles of open road in front of me and just be able to really sail on it. Ready for the open road, man. All right, let's get it loaded. Let's do it. At this point, I think I probably have about 200 break-in miles on the bike. It's been running perfect shifting through the gears, everything's just the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm looking forward to getting to Daytona, getting the bike out of the trailer, and hitting the road on this thing. things I'd really like to find. In the 40s, 50s, guys would oftentimes put hood ornaments, trophy toppers on the front fender of their bike. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, you know? Not really anything specifically in mind as far as what I want it to be. I'll just know it when I see it. And then of course, we also need the oil sending unit. That seems to be the part right now that's given us issue. Motors pumping oil fine. There's just something going on with that repop sending unit. So we want to get that fixed. We can find that sending unit, find an original one. That'll make everything exactly the way it's supposed to be. All right, we're looking for parts stack on UL. See, these are cool. Yeah. These are the lights are 50s, but that's a license plate bracket, so it hides on the bracket. On the bracket. Yeah. yeah. But there you go. You can get you a 13, 50. That's a cool little homemade job. Looks like it's a Peruvian gas monkey uh, nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I love watching your show, and I hope to get this see you place. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, how are you? Nice good. to see you, Paul. Good. Everything going good? Good, going fine. Going fine. Right. Got lucky today. Hey. Did you decide what your bike's missing? Well, I still want to find a hood ornament or a yeah. trophy yeah, top or something. Fender ornament. Fender ornament. I saw a there. couple of them. They were kind of like they were short. Yeah. You know, it's not like a a big. Uh, you know, some of them things are six inches tall. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, one other thing that would be cool to find? Oh, and look, that's it. Look at that, 42, 22. If you could find a year correct tag, 22 was always a special number to museums. It was Dale's favorite number. It's Matt's favorite number. It happens to actually be my birthday. It pops up everywhere and things that happen at Wills through time. You gonna go back and get that? It's 450 bucks. <laughs> My wife would kill me if I came home and spent $450 on a license plate. <laughs> so there's a box down here. It says it has North Carolina plates in it. So we're going to uh, see what we see. Doesn't look like 69, 69, 65. Looks like the oldest one's a 55. The search continues. Those don't have the right bracket on the bottom, though. Back in the days when I had triple. Look at that. 57, Harley, Daytona Beach. 
150 bucks. Hey, look at that. Pockets. <laughs> These kind of custom brackets on them. Those are cool. Nice remade rhino bags. Yeah. Not a bad little primary though. You could spend days and your entire life savings here if you wanted to. Mostly old American stuff, but there is some Honda stuff, Japanese stuff for guys that are into that. But as you can look around, I mean. You can find stuff as cheap as a couple of dollars, I mean, all the way up to twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for a complete bike. So, the sky's the limit when it comes to spending money. Yeah, those are nice tanks, huh? How about those? Are they real? Fresh they're real or not? They're hologram. <laughs> <laughs> Need a shifter rod. Well, cool. I think this is it right now for me. I got some parts for the 37 from Billy, floorboard mats, some horn bracketry and mounting stuff, shifter rod, these are all bent and bunged up. Billy makes the best. What are you getting on the starters here? Sixty. What would you do on the pair of those? Give me 110. Okay. okay. I've got limited money, so I'm walking around looking, see what I like, and then making my decision at the end of the day. So those things look nice. What are you getting on the guide lights? A hundred and a half on the pair. Okay. Okay. What are you getting on the spark plug? On? Forty. You know the problem with me is like when I open my wallet, the moths fly out. The moths. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I mean, mm, 125. What's your best price on that? What do you want to pay for it? You do 75 on it? I will for you. All right, fantastic. Yeah. You know how it works, right? You got a I mean, yeah. bolt that yep. goes in there? Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Hey. I appreciate All it. All right. <laughs> got it. There you go, dude. All right. <laughs> oh, He's that. been looking for a fender ornament oh, for his bike forever. Nice one, yeah. yeah, it is. That's good. Nice. All right, cool, man. Ooh, it matches you your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, found the one thing I was looking for. Now we got to find the necessary part, which is the oil pressure switch. But this was the most important. You know, the more I think about it, I bet Ralph might have one of those oil pressure switches. We'll have to go check out his booth in just a second. Oh, Steve, right here. It's exactly what we're looking for. Oil pressure switch. Ralph, what are you on that? Yeah, you sure that's the right one you need, huh? That's it. Uh, how about 35 bucks? I'll do it. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. So the way this works is inside there's just a little pressure switch that as long as oil pressure is pushing against that, it keeps this circuit open because you have positive coming down that's being grounded through the bike into the frame. Wire goes in there. As soon as it loses pressure, it allows that to close, continue the circuit, and illuminate your light up there to let you know if there's problems with your oil pressure because obviously with an uh, air-cooled motor, you want that oil circulating at all times. If you lose oil pressure, that means the oil is not circulating through the machine and you're going to have problems pretty quickly. So this is a really important part to make sure that your bike's running the way it should. Oh yeah, that'll look good. What do you think? That's nice, man. Yeah, I think it'll look really cool on there. I think it'd look better on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's awesome. That'll yeah. mount right up. Yeah. Cool, it's still room for a fender light. Yeah. Rocking, dude. Awesome. Did you get that oil sending unit switch? Yep. Got it all wired let's in. Let's see if it yep. works, man. Yeah, let's do it. Now's the test. Please. Otherwise, we might actually have an oiling problem. <laughs> 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 
Well, now we're ready to ride. Now we're ready to ride. Let's Excellent. do it. That's good. I'm glad that's all it was. Yeah. yeah. Cause that could have thrown <laughs> little seeds of doubt. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if he changed it out, it's still on. You're like, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, and it's just a flathead, so there's nothing yeah. to go wrong. But the light told you something was wrong, and there was the sensor. So all fixed. Nice. Time to ride. Let's do it. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Chris's flathead's up and running. Check out either one of these two videos. If you're digging what you see, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.